Do you like the Dreamcast? I love the Dreamcast, and that's why I'm on a mission to complete every single game on the system. There are almost 300 official English language releases, and I want you to join me on my journey to completing them all. The games are chosen at random. Last episode was all about incoming. Game number five is Red Dog Superior Firepower. Before we get into it, if you like the idea of this series, leave a like and a comment. That always helps out, and if you want to help out even more, I have a Patreon where you can watch episodes of this series early. Thanks a lot. So, Red Dog Superior Firepower was developed by Argonaut Software, who are famous for making the original Star Fox and Croc on the PlayStation. This was published by Sega themselves in Europe and Crave in North America, and it is a Dreamcast exclusive. Now, prior to playing this, I was a little bit worried because, to be honest, I'd never heard of it. So I did a little bit of research and I saw a lot of comments about how tough it can be. So time to strap in and see if I can make it. There are six single player missions to complete, so that's what we're going to do. Mission one, we get a bit of a briefing about an alien invasion from the forces known as the Hark or Hack. Second game in a row with an alien invasion. We must have been super paranoid around the millennium time. Anyways, there's a volcanic island that they've set up a base in, and it's nearly operational, but their generator isn't installed properly yet. They're still waiting for the maintenance guy to finish his lunch break. If you can sneak in and destroy it before he finishes his ham and cheese sandwich, you'll put Earth in good stead to repel the invasion. You're driving the eponymous Red Dog, which is an all-terrain combat vehicle, and you're getting down for some sweet vehicular combat against aliens. Now this is a game that would have been perfect with dual analog sticks, which sadly the Dreamcast doesn't possess, so you're essentially having to aim where you're pointing your car, which can be a bit awkward. It's certainly best not to accelerate while shooting. Drive-bys just aren't as cool with one analog stick. You'll notice that I die pretty quickly, which is worrying. In this cave, there are these spider enemies, which are a pain throughout the game. They can quickly sap your health if you get too close to them with their weird electric attack thing. Thankfully, this game knows that you're going to get hit quite often. As cool as this car is, it's mostly a sitting duck, but there are health packs everywhere to replenish your health. And the game, it's given me a good first impression. The level design pretty cool, with narrow corridors opening up to cooler open areas with lava, and the enemy variety is instantly quite good. Maybe they just want to show off early, but you know, so far I'm impressed. And it's not long before we hit our first boss battle. This mechanical scorpion thing. Does it think we're in the Marco reactor or something? I don't know, maybe scorpions are the prime choice for your engineer and security. Although they don't have the best track record. This is when I start to feel the physics weren't at their best because you've got a fast moving opponent who relentlessly fires stuff at you all the while you're supposed to dodge and also damage him with bullets. So you can only do pot shots at him. And this is really the point where you need to take advantage of some of the other capabilities of Red Dog. You have a high powered weapon that you can initiate, but the green bar at the bottom shows that it depletes rather quickly. Not surprising though, considering it is beastly. It runs out quick, but you can replenish it with these atom looking things. And you also need to take advantage of the boost system, which will hopefully be fast enough to get you out of danger and also give you enough time to retaliate. But as uh, sometimes, it's just not enough. Thankfully, you can start over where you left off. You have a certain amount of lives before you have to restart the whole level again. And yes, the game does possess a strafing system, and I tried it, but honestly, I could not get used to it. I thought it hindered me more than helped. With this guy, you just gotta keep shooting for the head, and eventually you'll get there. You do get a rating for each mission, and for the first one, I got a D, which as not the most studious of students in my life, I've seen Ds quite a lot, so I'm emotionally prepared for this. You also get a heads up that you've unlocked a challenge level, which as it turns out are actually quite important because they can give you some really sweet upgrades that will go a long way in helping you complete the game. So we've unlocked the first and I'm giving it to go straight away rather than jumping into mission two. The first is a test of speed and maneuverability. Not sure why they had to add acidic water to the test facility. Surely we could have just pretended the car is melting. It's a pretty exhilarating experience as you go across bumps, wind through snaky paths. I finished with barely a second left on the clock. Doing this unlocked an armor upgrade, definitely worth it. According to the equipment screen, it gives me 20% more defense, which is about the same as like spraying it with deodorant or something. Whatever, well, I'll take it. Mission two is on an Arctic research center. Again, these aliens bloody love the cold. Thing is, there is a nice tasty laser out in our Arctic base, and these aliens have got their hands on it and are gonna use it to their advantage. We've got to drive in there and destroy it before they destroy our cities. 
I think it's at this point I should probably praise the visuals. The game looks super slick. And yeah, it's probably the emulator boosting the resolution, but it's boosted it incredibly gracefully. Everything is sharp, the draw distance pretty good, the colors are great considering like it's lots of military bases and stuff. It's not the gray drab brown thing you'd expect it to be. It's quite a colorful game all things considered. Anyways, you're making your way to this base. This is a game where you definitely should take things slow. There's a time and a place for putting pedal to the metal, but mostly not. I played like a delicate little thing and it certainly worked in my favor. You'll soon come across the first laser and it acts sort of like a boss because it has a giant health bar. I was a little bit overwhelmed as to what should be done to combat it, but almost on accident, I blew up what kind of looked like a generator. There's a few of those around this elevator-like place and after those, I wasn't exactly sure what I was supposed to do and the timer ran down. We see the laser blasting off and you're warped back to the entrance to try again. I try and be a bit sneaky this time, shooting as many of those generators as possible before the boss battle actually kicks in, giving me loads of time to figure out what to do. And finally, I did the sensible thing of actually looking around and there's a place that screams, weak spot, weak spot. And it was fairly easy after that, despite loads of enemies trying their best to stop me. After that, we delve into the sewers because it's a video game, of course we do, which conveniently leads to the next laser cannon. Just shows how much they respect it. Who puts their giant death cannon next to the shitter? Again, it's the same sort of thing. Now that I know what I'm doing, it's super easy. Next up, a bit of platforming with a car. You can see these chunks of ice making their way to a crusher of sort in this like waterworks place. The only way to get to the other side is by timing your way across them one by one. It was squeaky bum time and I am shocked that I did it first time of asking. This is something normal Jordan would definitely balls up at least three or four times, but it must have been my lucky day. There's another laser cannon to destroy before worming your way to the boss of the level, which is an ATST if he'd just been to the real carnival. And it seems he was still nursing a hangover because he just stood there and took all the hits. That was super easy. Completing mission two unlocked challenge two, which is a shooting range. This is actually quite tough because of the twitchy nature of the aiming and those targets that fly around, they can frig off. My patience was kind of tested with this because anything that requires precision with my hands makes me really tense. It feels like threading a needle and I hate it. But after two tries, I do it and I unlock a weapon upgrade just in time for mission three. This is an escort mission. I didn't know we had time for Nucky Nucky during an alien invasion, but needs must. Oh wait, no, you need to escort a payload which contains a chemical poison into an enemy's base, which I'm not sure is approved by the Human Rights Council at the UN, but who cares, the aliens, we can gas them if we want to. Can't wait for 80 years later when the activists find out. Naturally, as an escort mission, it's a bit of a pain in the ass, although I will admit the setup is pretty cool. Coming out of a canyon, you have to make your way across some docks, and there's actually different routes to follow. Your little hovercraft payload can float on water, but you have to wind your way around and even destroy a big ship. That is kind of awesome, especially as you can see my cannon is nicely upgraded now. It's all going well, but my first downfall is those goddamn electro spider things yet again, and it's those bastards from above. You can't see them, and you need to react to them by driving three miles back down the road to get a decent angle on them. After you deposit the payload, then you have to leg it out onto the dropship. Why couldn't he have just dropped you off here from the beginning? Ah, oh, cheers, mate. And then we have a boss fight, which is quite unique. It's almost like a Star Fox boss, but in reverse. It's chasing you. I died quickly the first time since I didn't have a lot of health left, but as long as you dodge the dude and keep shooting, you'll find he's pretty easy. Despite having quite a few forms, he starts off with a shotgun spread, then homing missiles, then this circle thing, which makes me feel like I'm on an obstacle course, and then finally a laser beam. He's a persistent little fella. That was nice and short, despite a couple of deaths, and I've unlocked the survival challenge. A simple concept, don't die for two minutes. I'm pretty good at that in real life, so let's try it out in a video game. Mm, okay, usually I don't get shot at by aliens in real life, especially with rocket launchers, and this should be called drive around in a circle for two minutes. Finishing that unlocks two things, another shield upgrade, oh yeah, and a new challenge, search and collect. This has you trying to collect 22 time-ups in the area within the time limit. And let me tell you, this is almost impossible, infuriatingly so. The physics, while fine for the main gameplay, it's just not fun doing this challenge because you're bouncing around all over the place. Having to land on small platforms from a jump, oh god, I tried so many times and I have no idea what you get for it since I couldn't do it. 
I couldn't complete this mission. So uh, yeah, that did disappoint me, but let's move on to the next proper mission. Mission four is in an underground hydro generator where you're tasked with taking out a prototype submarine, a super weapon of sorts. This could change the tide of the war since apparently humans have been doing very well in sea battles. I both like this level and hate it equally because it's one of the toughest in the game. It's like every segment offers something painful. Firstly, you drop in, to a, like a closed room that gets flooded with those damn electro spiders which decimated me the first time. And just when you think you're safe, a giant robot opens the door and starts having some fun as well. I decided just leg it past everything. Then there's a section where the developers realized their physics made absolutely no sense whatsoever and decided to run with it. So now you're driving up walls, <laughs> wonderful. This bit's fine, but there is a massively stressful version of it later on. All of this eventually leads to turning your car into a boat. It's handy how they had the accessory needed right there. Useful. It leads up to the boss battle, which is indeed the very submarine you were sent in to destroy. And he's a bit of a git, I tell you. Not only does he disappear half the time, and not only does he fire homing missiles at you, but he also releases mines that float in your direction. And it's a nightmare to avoid him and shoot him. This took me a good few tries. I died quite a lot here. Maybe it was my own fault on occasions because it doesn't look like it should be so hard considering the first battle I had with him seemed like I was going my way before I randomly just blew up. I don't know if something hit me or I drifted into his hitbox and collided. I have no idea. After multiple tries and even a game over where I had to start the whole mission again, I eventually got it down. But my troubles were only just starting because unlike the other missions, the boss isn't the end. I thought it fell a bit short because now we have an escape event. We need to get the hell out of here as the water levels rise. There's so much crap in your way and you have so little room for error. But errors I made. Dodging the debris, fine. The laser turbines, okay. What tickled my goat, however, is when you get to this open area and depending on how you're doing, the water level is likely covering the narrow gantry you're supposed to be driving on. No barriers, no guidance whatsoever and I just drove off the edge because there was no more path to drive on. What? Like, where was I supposed to go? I don't know, I can't see. Well, after multiple deaths and game overs, having to replay the level and boss again, I eventually cracked the idea you're supposed to drive on the piping. As though I'm supposed to know that's actually a thing. It wouldn't be so bad if it didn't look like there was a door opening you're supposed to jump over there. Jesus. I mean, it makes for a great cinematic piece, but unfortunately, you just want to break the game into more than one piece. I hated every second of that. Next up, another challenge mission. This time, take down 150 enemies in three minutes. Hitting and running is fun. It took me a couple of attempts, but I did it and unlocked a game cheat, which was cool, but uh, don't worry, I didn't use it. And also a sweet weapon upgrade and a new challenge, which I tried three times, but after instantly falling off every time, I thought, you know what, I can't be arsed with it. Let's do the next mission, the Research City Facility thing. You gotta go in there, rescue some scientists, and immediately I can see why the Hark aliens are trying to annihilate us. Have you seen the state of this place? I'd want to wipe out the galaxy too. It's like Sheffield Town Center on a Sunday morning, recovering from the drunks the night before. These guys are pretty relentless, but I try to just power through them since there's just too many to take on properly. It also appears my new upgrade gave me a targeting system to lock onto enemies, that's cool. Once you get to the facility, the scientists rock out in a Hummer and you need to escort them to a bunker to be safe. So yeah, another escort mission. Obviously this is way harder, it's almost torture. This part I obviously had to take very slowly, sticking just slightly ahead of the Jeep. The problem with this part is that it's just so trial and error. You don't really know which way to go or where the aliens are gonna pop out from. When you finally get there, there's one more spanner in the works. You need to protect the bunker from giant mechs until the dropship arrives. The pilot ate a dodgy sausage the night before and he's paying for it today and so are we. Thankfully, this is the easiest part of the level because the mechs barely even notice you. You just shoot them at the arse and you're done with it. Doing this unlocks a new challenge as per usual, destroying 30 strong enemies within two minutes. And uh, I couldn't be arsed with it. I tried a couple of times, but I gave up. There's only one real mission left, so let's just get on with it. Let's just finish it. We are in space on the mothership, tasked with destroying the reactor. Gingerly making your way across some piping, I'm in, in the ventilation system, and there's a tank just waiting for me. I applaud the overthinking, but I do feel sorry for their troopers. Sorry, Jimmy, you're in the piping system today. You're just sitting in the ventilation system for hours on end, just in case somebody pops in. 
Eventually, you'll come across a sub-boss, and it might actually be the toughest boss in the entire game, which is frustrating as hell since it means you have to replay the whole level again if you game over, which you probably will, a lot. He's a ninja electro robot who zooms around and zaps you like those damn spiders. It wouldn't be so bad if you could rotate quickly enough to keep up with him, but there's no room to fart in here, and the mound on the floor messes up your balance so much. Perhaps there is some skill to it, but it felt to me like I just had to get lucky. And after multiple tries, I finally did it, but we're only halfway through this level, so pray I don't balls up. The next part is quite unremarkable, aside from a little bit of exploration into two different rooms to destroy the generators to open the door to the final boss, and this is an absolute test of endurance, as you have to destroy the mechs which appear, which then opens up the core which you can take pot shots at. The longest thing was figuring out what to actually do since you have to shoot the floor to knock out the mechs. With that defeated, it can't just be over, can it? No! To add to the difficulty, you have another one of those painful escape sections. And man, this level is just brutal. Usually there's like one tough section in every level. This has three, each of which is capable of brandishing a game over due to how many times you have to try it. The final boss and this escape section would be fine by themselves, but combining it with ninja robots, that's just cruel, man. On my second attempt, I somehow make it through even though I balls up massively. Not sure how that happened, but uh, the game is complete and we see the enemies in the game giving us a bow. What are you bowing for? What did they do, apart from be annoying? Anyways, game finished. In terms of fun, you know, it's got a lot going for it. It's pretty decent, like a Dreamcast exclusive. Even if it does have a few rough edges, I would give it a 7 out of 10 in terms of the fun, you know, the mechanics. In presentation terms, I think it's really good in that aspect. Visually, audibly, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. It could have been better in the cutscenes. They do seem really stuck on without too much thought put into them, or at least not enough to make it like a top tier presentation. In terms of difficulty, I think I'm going to have to give this an 8. Obviously, I can't show you all the times I failed, but that submarine level and that final level, they are brutal and you can't afford to mess up. It wouldn't be so bad if you had like infinite continues, but having to start the whole level again after a few deaths, that is a tough one, like to see the end credits. Completion time, five hours. Now, it is worth noting that the big pull of Red Dog back in the day would have been the multiplayer, kind of like GoldenEye, like four player split screen. And I can imagine the absolute carnage that could occur, especially with the physics in this game. Obviously, I can't show that off in this video, but it's something to consider if you enjoy retro multiplayer gaming. Thanks for watching. If you watched all the way through, please leave me a dog emoji in the comments. Like and subscribe and even check out my Patreon to support me in the best way possible and get awesome stuff in return, mainly these videos early. You can watch the next episode right now and chosen at random is Pod Speed Zone. Check it out with the links below and special thanks to my super producers. Alexander Cato, Brent McLean, FF14 Best RPG, Jcross7776, they, Sven Nowlets, Wixit, and Josh Foote. Thank you ever so much for your wonderful support.